وسنقاوم احتلالا ثوريا ايرانيا للقرار السياسي اللبناني Good afternoon on this Tuesday December 24th I'm Yuna Nofal and these are today's headlines Hariri calls for placing Lebanon's interest above all others As Slayman hopes Christmas brings with it the spirit of love and hope in the country. A powerful car bomb explosion rocks the police headquarters in Cairo, killing at least 13 people. And a festive favor, all I want for Christmas is you, sells the one million sales milestone in the United Kingdom. We have a special performance to spread some cheer. Former Prime Minister Saad Hariri is calling for placing Lebanon's interests above all others and for tackling divisive matters with an objective approach. Hariri said, quote, "If wisdom calls at such hard times for prioritizing Lebanon's interests, preserving the principles of coexistence and ending the participation in the Syrian war, the peak of wisdom would be to fear God over the country's fate and the blood of the oppressed Syrian people." and commit to the values of Christ and be objective when tackling national disputes and placing Lebanon's interests above the interests of access and foreign commitments. In his Christmas message, Hadidi said vigilance and wisdom were needed in light of the dangers surrounding Lebanon and other Arab countries. The future movement leader also expressed hope Christmas would serve as a motivation for more solidarity in the country and he hoped for justice, peace and unity in the Arab world. In his turn, President Michel Slayman says he hopes Christmas brings with it the spirit of love and hope in the country. He wishes that this spirit will help Lebanon overcome its political and humanitarian crises, and he added that he hopes the birth of Christ will represent an occasion for officials and the people to become aware of the situation in Lebanon and therefore cooperate to improve it through dialogue and respecting the military and respecting security officials to intensify their measures. during the holidays in order to grant the people peace of mind. Maronite patriarch Shadadai is warning that the sale of lands in Lebanon is tantamount to committing a crime and treason, stressing the mandatory election of a new president it should be on time. Our land is the land of coexistence. It gave us our identity. Adai said in his traditional Christmas message, we should preserve our land and leave it as a legacy for others. Selling it or plotting against our land is a crime and treason for the Lebanese identity and history. He said peace building in Lebanese territories and the Orient is a responsibility and he said the church rejects any Lebanese sells his land. We help him through institutions and through his land. Adai urged big investors to preserve their lands to protect their historic identity and invest them for development projects to contribute to the country's economy and the people's livelihoods. The Syrian government of President Bashar al-Assad has received substantial imports of Iraqi crude oil from an Egyptian port in the last nine months. Shipping and payments documents show part of an under-the-radar trade that has kept his military running despite Western sanctions. Assad's government has been blacklisted by Western powers for its role in the two-and-a-half-year civil war, forcing Damascus to rely on a strategic ally, Iran, as its main supplier of crude oil. Now an exclusive Reuters examination based on previously undisclosed commercial documents about Syrian oil purchases shows however that Iran is no longer acting alone. Dozens of shipping and payment documents viewed by Reuters show that millions of barrels of crude delivered to Assad's government on Iranian ships have actually come from Iraq through Lebanese and Egyptian trading companies. A powerful car bomb explosion has rocked the police headquarters in an Egyptian city north of Cairo, killing at least 13 people and injuring 120. An interim government spokesman accused the Muslim Brotherhood of orchestrating the attack and branded it as a terrorist organization. The Brotherhood then quickly condemned the blast in an emailed statement. The explosion was so strong that parts of the gate surrounding the directorate are demolished. Rescue teams are pulling people from under the rubble. The Middle East news agency quoted cabinet spokesman Sharif Shauki as saying that the Muslim Brotherhood showed its ugly face as a terrorist organization shedding blood and messing with Egypt's security. Sections of the five-story building in the Nile Delta city of Mansoura collapsed after the blast early on Tuesday and police evacuated surrounding buildings. 
Coming up next, thousands of worshipers and tourists from around the world flock to Jesus' birthplace in Bethlehem. Stay with us for this and more. Welcome back. Thousands of worshipers and tourists from around the world flock to Jesus' birthplace in Bethlehem as the Middle East reels from conflicts and Pope Francis celebrates his first Christmas Mass. Jerusalem's Latin patriarch will lead a procession to Bethlehem and celebrate midnight mass in the holy city, attended by Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and other dignitaries. Christmas this year comes as conflicts and natural disasters have stricken Christian worldwide. From the historic Syrian town of Malula, where residents still speak Jesus' ancient Aramaic, to Typhoon Tacloban in the Philippines. Pope Francis, who has repeatedly prayed for an end to the Syrian conflict and spoken against international armed intervention since his election in March, plans to make his first visit to the Holy Land in May of next year. Yemeni political parties have signed a document pledging a just solution to the contentious South where secessionists have autonomy. The text was written late on Monday by delegates to a national dialogue between political parties and the government and aims at drafting a new constitution for Yemen and preparing for elections in February. The question of southern Yemen has been a major stumbling block for the talks launched in March, with hardline factions of the secessionist southern movement boycotting the discussions. The dialogue is part of a transitional process stipulated by UN-backed initiative brokered by neighboring Gulf countries, which ended a year of Arab Spring-inspired protests against the 33-year rule of former President Ali Abdullah Saleh. France's UN ambassador said a vote on whether to expand the UN peacekeeping force in South Sudan could take place on Christmas Eve. Gerard Rao, the current council president, said there have been positive reaction from all 15 council members. Now, Susan Power also spoke. Troops are expected to be transferred from UN missions in Congo, Darfur, Ebye, Ivory Coast, and Liberia, along with three attack helicopters, three utility helicopters, and a C-130 military transport plane. To immediately address the dire situation, the Secretary General has requested the Security Council to authorize an additional 5,000 peacekeepers for UNMIS. And the United States is one of many council members, uh, in fact, all council members, uh, that fully supports uh, this proposal. We are eager uh, to work with the Secretariat and troop contributing countries and other member states to ensure that the mission has the assets and resources that it needs to fulfill its mandate. To that end, the United States has just circulated a draft resolution responding to the Secretary General's request that the Council increase UNMIS's troop ceiling. The start of former Pakistan President Pervez Musharraf's trial for treason has been delayed over security fears after explosives were found near the road he was to take to court. Lawyer Anwar Mansoor Khan told the Special Treason Tribunal on Tuesday that the former general would not be able to attend after police found five kilograms of explosives and detonators. The 70-year-old had been expected to appear in prison before a specially convened court in the capital of Islamabad after legal efforts to have the tribunal ruled invalid failed. The allegations relate to his imposition of emergency rule in November 2007, and Musharraf and his legal team have dismissed the case as politically motivated. Mariah Carey's festive favorite, All I Want for Christmas is You, has seen a seasonal sales surge tip it over the one million sales milestone in the United Kingdom. And as new official charts company data shows, the British public have bought an incredible 15 million Christmas tunes digitally since downloading began in 2004. Mariah's much-loved seasonal classic passed the landmark sales threshold yesterday, establishing itself as one of the UK's all-time greatest hits. The song is one of only 142 singles in the history of the official charts to pass the 1 million copies mark in the UK. Here is Miss Christmas performing it with Michael Bublé. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, uh, I'm thrilled to have you, and even more because I love the Christmas song you wrote so much that I even recorded it on my own record. Oh, I heard something about that. I did. <laughs> well, you know what? It would be a huge no, honor if you'd sing it with me. All right, Frank, let's go. Okay. Don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree.
And on that festive cheer, let me remind you of our headlines. Haiti calls for placing Lebanon's interest above all others as Sleiman hopes Christmas brings with it the spirit of love and hope in the country. A powerful car bomb explosion rocks the police headquarters in Cairo, killing at least 13 people. In a festive favor, All I Want for Christmas is You sells the 1 million sales milestone in the United Kingdom, a special performance just for you. Those are your Christmas Eve headlines live on Future Television in Beirut. Live from all of us here, we wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas. Good night. <laughs>